All right, everybody. Gracie, get out of the way. I wanted to show you my new Hobie Mirage Compass and just give you a, a little bit of a taste of the rigging uh, of that I did on this compass. It is pretty simple and it helps me to uh, fish a lot more efficiently than I did on my Pescador Pro. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I've got it rigged. Okay, so as for the rigging, I kept it simple. The reason I switched from a Pescador Pro to uh, this Hobie Mirage Compass is really for three reasons. Uh, the first, I wanted to be able to pedal a kayak as opposed to paddle a kayak. So propulsion was the first reason that I switched. The second is I couldn't stand up on my Pescador Pro and I wanted to do some sight fishing. So I rigged this out, this Hobie Mirage Compass so that I could stand up. And then finally, I wanted it to be efficient, meaning I wanted to maximize the amount of time that I spent on the water as opposed to preparing my kayak uh, to load it up and to go uh, to the marsh and to unload it and bring it back home. And so I think I'll show you in this rigging um, video how I did that to make it far more efficient. So the first thing that I use is I use an ingle cooler for storing and it fits right in the back of the kayak. I also use the built-in fish um, fishing pole holders and I keep my secondary fishing pole on the left side. On the right side I don't really store my floating net there. I usually have it right here up at the very front of the kayak and I lean it. I just rest it there while I'm pedaling. Then I've got my seat and many people are having a problem with the back bar, this bar right here, but I don't have that problem as long as I tighten the lumbar support that is back here. So it's got a, a strap and you've got to really pull this strap tight. It actually tightens up the backrest and it prevents me from sitting on uh, that that bar like everybody else is complaining about. So I really like the seat. I do have two complaints overall with the kayak and one of them is with the seat. Hobie, if you look at this, made this strap. It looks like you have room to move the strap down, but you don't because the buckle is right in the center, which is smart. But what they needed is they need to lengthen this so that those of us that are tall, 6'2", like I am, can lean this back even further. Right now, that's as far back as that will lean. So some people are adding things to the clip and doing things like that. I'm just learning, trying to learn to just use that seat. So in order to rig this efficiently, I did four upgrades and mods. The first is I took the round hatch that was here and installed a square hatch. That round hatch is now right here in the front of the kayak. So many people are moving the round hatch to the front and putting a square hatch back in the back. That's the first. The second is I installed this Scotty cup holder because the cup holder on the compass, my second complaint, is pretty much useless without it. Your cup will fall over. So I'll put the parts that I used uh, here. There's two Scotty parts that you can purchase for about 20 bucks and mount this so that you can have a, a usable cup holder. Then I drilled the required holes to pull my transducer and power cables through for my fish finder. And I mounted that using a ram, one inch ram bolt and the ram mount on top of what came with my Garmin Striker 4 fish finder. Now this is the same fish finder that I use on my Perception Pescador. There's a trick, a dollar and 18 cents uh, if you spend it, you can buy what's necessary to mount the fish finder underneath in the Lawrence Ready Hobie Kayak. I have a different video for that and I'll link that video right here. So watch that if you have a Garmin Striker 4 and you want to put it on a Hobie Lawrence Ready Kayak like the Mirage Compass. The other thing I did was I put these two eyelets into the tracks 
These are components that you can purchase as well. But I use these for hooking up my stakeout pole, which I have strapped down here. The other modification that I did is I took out the bungee that comes with the Mirage Compass and I installed these two Pro Angler paddle clip assemblies. They fit right in the same hole that the bungee came out of and screw right into your kayak. And what it allows you me to do is I can now store my paddle and press it down into the clip and it's secure. But then I can take my stakeout pole and put that stakeout pole right on top and use the strap to strap it down. So I can put two things over here. I've got my paddle and I've got my stakeout pole. Lastly, I just added the same uh, pole, fishing pole holder that I had in the other kayak. Now, what do I keep in the front hatch and the back hatch and what component am I missing? I'm still waiting on one to come in. So in the front hatch, this is where I've got the Hobie bucket and I store my Nakwa battery. I also store some emergency equipment and very important to have if you're a kayak fisherman, my mosquito repellent, at least out here in the marshes in Florida. So that's what I keep uh, up in the front hatch. All right. In the middle hatch, remember I said efficiency. This is this has now replaced my tackle box. So here in the pocket, I keep my fish grips for now. I have three of these Plano, I believe these are the 3200 or 3400 boxes. I'll look it up and I'll put all of this in the description below. This one holds my batteries for my GoPro. I've got them each numbered. So I just uh, drop the dead one in here when it runs out and I put in the next higher number up. The second holds all my hooks and uh, so jig heads, hooks, and two topwater lures that I use. And finally, the third one holds all the soft plastics uh, that I use. So my DOA cow figgy chickens, my down south lures, and a new shrimp that I'm testing out as well. The rest are in here. I've got some leader line, I've got my pliers, and I've got a popping cork. That's pretty much all I take with me when I go out in the marsh those two lures and then uh, soft baits. And I can keep all of those right here on the kayak in the storage compartment, readily accessible when I need them. That keeps this deck open. And when I have the pole in my hand, I can stand up on uh, this deck and fish. The other thing that I put on the front is I put a carabiner in the pad eye that comes on the kayak and I've attached this dog leash to it. You saw my dog at the beginning of this video. I attached this dog leash, which comes all the way back here to the seat, but it's my stand-up assist strap. So I'm not used to standing up in this kayak, but this allows me a point that I can pull on pretty strongly to stand up, and it helps me to stand up. And the rest of the storage, the one item I'm waiting for is I'm gonna be able to put a bag on the back of this where I can hold a few things and uh, while I'm fishing. And then I put my yak measuring stick right here when I'm fishing. That's it. It's pretty quick and it allows me uh, to fish very efficiently in the marsh. I can load up quickly and tear down quickly and that maximizes my time on the water. Well, thanks for watching this. I hope that it helps you in some small way. If you've got any ideas for me or any comments on this video, please comment below. Otherwise, subscribe and you'll see more Kayak Fishing Addict videos. If I don't see you soon, I'll see you in the marsh. Okay, one extra bonus on this video. I want to really commend the best marine and outdoors company. They made these kayak racks and I'll put the link to those uh, below as well. They are actually awesome. Uh, very easy to, to install. They hold the kayak securely against the wall, saving space in the garage. And all I have to take off of this kayak in order to store it 
I uh, take off the fish finder and its mount. I just pop out the um, pole holder that's in the front, the seat, and uh, the cooler and the other fishing pole. Then I just slide that right onto this rack and it holds it securely out of the way of my truck when I pull into the garage. So shout out to the best marine and outdoors company for building a great kayak rack. <laughs>